Bears generally show great respect for humans, avoiding contact whenever possible. You must always respect bears, and that means being aware of where they live, what signs they leave, and some basic aspects of their behavior. In North America, about half a dozen people die every year in encounters with bears, and there are dozens of injuries. The numbers in British Columbia are much lower, even though this province has half the grizzly bears in Canada and a quarter of the black bears. In fact, there have been fewer than 10 bear-related deaths here in the past decade, and only about two dozen injuries. This, despite the fact that there are more people working and living in the bush than ever before. The odds against being killed by a bear are almost a million to one. Actually, there are hundreds of encounters each year, but the majority of them don't result in injury or death. Still, it's always preferable not to encounter a bear at all. Bear encounters aren't always avoidable, but you have to do your part. Normally, avoidance is a mutual goal. Bears have incredible sensory capacities. Their sense of smell and hearing are tremendously acute. In the bush, give those senses a chance to work. In other words, make noise and travel with the wind at your back where possible. Bears are fascinating and complex animals, but attempting to observe bears in the bush is foolish and puts you at unnecessary risk. Anytime you can see a bear, you should be taking precautions. Even when there's considerable distance between you and the bear, you may not be safe. Bears are fast, very fast. Put the human world record holder in the 100 meter dash up against a grizzly bear. By the time the human is crossing the finish line, the grizzly is 66 meters ahead. That's 66% faster than the fastest human. You are not the fastest human, and you're running on the bear's track. Some people think bears can't run downhill. That's not true. They run downhill very well. Bear biologists have found that in the vast majority of cases when bears sense humans, they move away. In a very few instances, they may stay around to observe the humans. And in extremely rare cases, they may actually approach people. Later, we'll discuss what to do in that situation. There are two types of bears that you may encounter in British Columbia, black bears and grizzly bears. There are no grizzly bears on Vancouver Island or on the Queen Charlotte Islands. And there are few or no grizzlies in the heavily settled lower mainland and in the dry southern parts of the province. The grizzly is the undisputed monarch of the wild. A male grizzly averages 150 to 200 kilograms. But despite their overwhelming physical presence, the goal of a bear is to get through life along the path of least resistance. Grizzlies were named for their gray or silver-tipped fur, although grizzlies' fur can change color depending on the season and the age of the bear. Black bears are smaller than grizzlies, and there are more of them in the wild. As the name suggests, they often have darker fur, but not always. Black bears can, in fact, range in color from jet black to blonde or brown, depending on geographic and habitat factors. The behavior of black bears also differs significantly from grizzlies, although in their natural habitat, they also attempt to avoid humans wherever possible. It's important to be able to distinguish between black and grizzly bears. How you respond if you encounter a bear depends to some extent on which species you're facing. Fur color is only one method of telling black and grizzly bears apart, and often not the best. Grizzlies have a distinctive hump on their shoulders, which is a mass of muscle used for digging. Grizzlies also have an upturned muzzle, giving their face a concave look, while black bears have a straighter, flatter snout and no shoulder hump. Grizzlies are generally larger and chunkier than black bears and have much longer claws, again for digging. Grizzly bear claws are as long as a human finger. Black bear claws are shorter. Since the arrival of Europeans in North America, bear habitat has been steadily shrinking. Where once grizzly bears roamed the western half of the continent, today they have been all but exterminated in the continental United States and Mexico. In Canada and Alaska, resource exploration and development, human settlement, 
and recreation continue to place people in grizzly habitat. The smaller black bears have proven more adaptable to expanding human population. They continue to be scattered throughout North America, although their habitat has also been severely impacted by the activities of people. Bears have a right to live in their natural habitat. If you also must be there, give bears the opportunity to learn of your presence by making noise as you move through the area and by attempting to move in the same direction as the wind. Once alerted, bears will almost always choose to move away from the source of the noise and smell. How will you know when you're in bear country? Simple. If you're not in a city or town, you're in bear country. Bears live everywhere there's enough habitat to support them. Nor do they mind living near humans, especially if they've learned that where humans live, there are easy sources of food. These are known as food condition bears, and some have become habituated to the presence of people. When they learn to associate people with food, they suddenly become the most dangerous kind of bear. Living and working in bear country is a simple fact of life for many people. The bush is where their work is. So they must understand and appreciate precautions in bear country to minimize the chance of encountering a bear. Bears are opportunistic feeders. On their own, they'll dig roots, eat berries and insects, and scavenge for dead animals. But they are certainly capable of hunting, and some are quite accomplished. But bears will learn quickly that where they find humans, they find garbage and other easy foods. Therefore, cleanliness in the bush is of the utmost importance. Pack it in, pack it out is the phrase to live by. Bears are unpredictable wild animals. A bear that has lived around humans for years can suddenly stop relating people and food and begin relating to people as food. This happens rarely, but with garbage conditioned bears, it happens. The simplest course of action is to keep your camp and your work area clean and free of garbage. Don't give that remarkable sense of smell a chance to pick up the scent of your food. Planning to avoid an encounter with a bear means knowing something about these animals. Bears choose their habitat based primarily on the supply of food and spend most of their time searching for it. These omnivorous animals can consume almost anything, but in the spring, their diet consists largely of roots, new shoots on plants, and mammals. In the summer, berries and grasses, and berries, roots, and mammals in the fall. Spawning salmon are also a vitally important autumn food source for coastal grizzly bears and some black bears. Accordingly, in the bush, you should factor the time of year into your planning. In spring, for instance, you're most likely to find inland bears in areas with southern exposure where the snow melts first and vegetation is most advanced. During autumn, bears are in vigorous pursuit of berries, and the larger the patch, the more likely that a bear is nearby. Salmon spawning streams are also a favorite food source in fall. During the summertime, when vegetation is abundant, it becomes more difficult to predict feeding grounds. But any significant source of food should be considered a potential bear attractant. Especially dangerous are carcasses of other animals. Bears will readily feed on carrion, which is most often found in spring and fall. Whether it's spring, summer, or fall, identifying a potential bear feeding area should also alert you to the possibility that a bear could be resting nearby. Bears will stay near a high-quality, secure food source for as long as the food lasts and may aggressively defend it. Other signs that bears are in the area include recently overturned rocks or rotted wood that has been torn apart. These signs suggest a bear foraging for insects. Dug up ground also suggests bears, especially grizzly bears. Look for crushed vegetation, berries on the ground, and hair on the bark of trees where bears have scratched themselves. Bear droppings are an obvious sign. How recent these signs are can also be an important consideration, but unless you're trained to estimate the age of bear signs, you're better off to respond as though they are fresh. As mentioned earlier, basic cleanliness will help you avoid attracting bears, which are attracted by the odor of human food and its residue, garbage. You must either burn garbage completely in a portable incinerator, 
or send it out with a supply vehicle. Food must be stored in airtight containers. Perfumes and colognes can attract bears. Although there's little evidence that bears are attracted to menstruating women, it is prudent to be cautious and use tampons rather than pads. Dispose of sanitary products by burning them thoroughly or by placing them in sealed plastic bags and packing them out. Camps should be set up so as to provide nothing of interest to bears. Bears are curious animals in search of food. If your camp is being set up on the site of a previous camp, you may attract a bear habituated by previous occupants, despite all your precautions. However, you still must take steps to avoid attracting one. Camps should not be set up on natural pathways. A convenient trail for humans is also convenient for bears. Similarly, camps should not be set up in obvious bear feeding areas or areas where bear signs are evident. Setting up along a river can be unwise for several reasons. Bears use rivers as traveling routes. The noise of the water drowns out the sound of both you and the bear. And river edges are natural feeding areas for bears. The structure of the camp can also be important. Pitch tents in a semicircle or a line, so any bear that does wander into camp has a clear escape route. A bear in the middle of a circle of tents can become confused and frightened. The main reason a bear might wander into camp in the first place is to investigate the smell of food or garbage. Keep both well away from sleeping areas. The camp should also have clear sight lines. Nearby cover can hide a bear. Plus, you want to be able to see the cooking and garbage burning areas. Those will be the first places a bear will visit if it comes into camp. To give yourself as much of an edge as possible, cooking areas should be at least 50 meters away from the sleeping area, the garbage disposal area at least 200 meters away. Under no circumstances should food be kept in sleeping or working areas. An often effective deterrent for camps is portable electric fencing. It's important to remember that electric fences are not a substitute for a clean camp. Bears will go through the fences to get to food. But an electric fence can discourage a bear that is merely curious. If you must store food nearby, prepare a cache and suspend it at least four meters off the ground. There are several methods of caching food. Here are some examples. The natural curiosity of bears makes them a risk to non-food items as well. Again, a clean camp is key. Don't litter. Bears are attracted to anything with an odd smell even oil cans, film containers, boxes, and plastic bags. Anytime you can see a bear, you're in a risky situation. Prevention is obviously better than confrontation, and you should always strive to avoid high-risk situations. However, if you do encounter a bear, you must know what to do. If you spot a bear nearby, you have several options. First, though, try to determine what kind of bear you're dealing with, grizzly or black. If the bear has not detected you, and if you think you can do it without the bear noticing, move away from it, quietly, back the way you came. Try to wait until the bear is looking down before moving. If you can't leave without being noticed, try to move quietly upwind so the bear will pick up your scent. That might be enough to cause the bear to move away. If the bear has not detected you, but is moving toward you, try to move well away from its route. If you think the bear will notice you, start to make noise by talking loudly. Try not to shout, it may startle the animal. Your goal is to help it identify you well before it reaches you. If the bear knows you're there, but you're separated by considerable distance, start moving slowly away from the bear. If the bear starts to follow, 
Set some piece of equipment or your pack down in its path to distract it and continue to move slowly away. Don't leave food, except as a last resort. Food may just give the bear the idea that there's more where that came from. And even if it works and you're able to escape, that bear will feel that it can freely approach the next person it sees for another reward. If dropping food will stop an attack, drop it. But you should try other items first. This is where the ability to identify species is important. If the bear is a grizzly, climbing a tree is a good option if you can get at least four meters off the ground quickly. When a black bear or a small grizzly bear exhibits predatory behavior, threatening you, your job is to convince it that you will be an uncooperative food source. On rare occasions, black bears have been known to stalk people. Grizzly bears are even less likely to do that. But if you see what appears to be predatory behavior from a black bear or a small grizzly, you must let the bear know you plan to fight if attacked. Jump up and down, wave your arms, yell at it. Try to look as large as possible. If you surprise a bear in a sudden close confrontation, the bear may act aggressively in a defensive manner. The act is intended to intimidate you. The bear may be protecting a food cache or it may have cubs nearby. If you see carrion, back away quickly. But if there's no evidence of a dead animal, keep calm. Don't make any sudden movements and don't look the bear in the eye. Slowly wave your arms in the air, talk in low tones, and try to give the bear your smell by getting upwind. All of these actions will help the bear identify what you are and reduce its confusion. If it has an opportunity to leave, it may take it. The bear may stand on its hind legs and swing its head from side to side. It's trying to pick up your scent and possibly get a better look at you. While it's standing, it's not going to approach. Bears attack on all fours. If the bear continues its threatening stance, it may be preparing to charge. Often, a bear will bluff charge more than once, stopping at the last second or veering off to one side. If a bear charges and you're convinced it intends to attack, this is the time to lie down and play dead. Lie on your side in the fetal position with your knees up against your chest and your head between your knees. Lace your fingers behind your neck and stay in a tight ball. This position will show the bear that you're not aggressive and it protects your vital organs. If the bear does attack, do your best to remain in the ball and try not to struggle or cry out. Remember though, playing dead works only when the bear is acting in a defensive manner, protecting cubs, a food source or territory in a sudden encounter. A bear that sees you as food will merely find you easier prey in this position. Telling the difference between these bear behaviors could save your life. Female bears will act aggressively to protect their offspring. This is especially true of grizzly bears. If you see a bear with cubs, leave the area immediately. Mother bears can be easily provoked at any distance. Some bears attack for other reasons. They may be extremely old or injured. The only way to identify such conditions, however, is during an autopsy. It's not something you'll be able to pick out in the field. As mentioned earlier, making noise while in the bush is a good way to alert bears to your presence, giving them a chance to move away. A few rocks in a tin can makes an effective noisemaker. Other people shout or sing as they travel in the bush. There are other noisemakers on the market, including air horns, Noisemakers are to guarantee, however, that you won't encounter a bear. Some bears, particularly young animals, may even be attracted by the noise. But making noise while you're in the bush is still a good idea. And the best type of noise is your voice, which helps the bear identify you as human. Other bear deterrents include pepper spray, which is proven effective in trials. Aimed at a bear's eyes, some sprays have deterred bears from close approaches. However, when you're close enough to spray a bear in the eyes, you've probably made an earlier mistake. 
and the sprays may not be effective against an enraged and aggressive bear. Depending on what you're doing in the field, carrying a gun may not be possible. If you do plan to carry a gun, be sure you have been adequately trained in its use. One of the dangers of being armed is that people may be inclined to take more risks while in bear country, knowing they have protection. Keep in mind two things. First, your increased confidence may put bears at risk. And second, many bear attack victims are armed hunters. Guns are no guarantee of safety. Your chances of survival in a bear attack improve greatly if you take one other simple precaution. Stay in touch. When you're in the field, others should know exactly where to find you if you're overdue. If you're moving around, check in periodically, say every two hours, to keep other people informed of your whereabouts. If you or someone in your party is involved in a bear encounter and is injured, you should know some basic survival first aid techniques. Bears inflict two types of injuries. Claws and teeth tear flesh and cause a great deal of bleeding. Powerful paws and jaws crush bones and cause internal injuries. Bleeding should be stopped as quickly as possible with a tourniquet if the injury is on a limb or by pressure applied to the wound. Internal injuries are more difficult to determine, so the main goal should be to get the injured person to medical treatment as quickly as possible. That may mean leaving the injured person behind while another goes for help. Your individual circumstances will naturally affect that decision. Mayday, Mayday, this is BJP. I'm requesting a helicopter. We've had a bear mauling. Bear behavior can be very difficult to predict. It's better not to have to. Avoid bear encounters in the bush by making noise while you work and travel, keeping the wind at your back as you move, staying alert and aware of your surroundings, avoiding areas that show signs of bear use, leaving bear feeding areas. If you encounter a bear, try not to overreact. You'll frequently have at least a little time to think about your circumstances before you act. Leave the area if the bear is not aware of you. If you can't leave, warn the bear of your presence by shouting or talking and waving your arms. Don't run unless you're absolutely sure you can reach safety or if the bear is protecting a dead animal. If the bear acts aggressively, try to determine its intent, defensive or predatory. If you notice cubs or food nearby, or if you startled it, the bear is probably acting defensively. Back away slowly, waving your arms. If it attacks, roll into a ball on the ground, protecting your face and stomach. If the bear seems to be stalking you, try to intimidate it by acting aggressively, jumping up and down and shouting. If you have time, try to climb a tree. Be bear aware, because the safest bear encounter is no bear encounter at all.